Ever since the Chinese rover Chang-5 landed on the moon, there has been growing evidence that this celestial body is vastly different from what we had long imagined. Especially in its depths, the moon seems to conceal treasures we had no inkling of. The rover's shocking discovery could potentially signify the beginning of the end for the climate catastrophe. We'll delve into what exactly the rover found on the moon and why this discovery might foreshadow the end of the climate crisis. Stay with us, as we're about to forever change your perspective on this celestial body. What did the Chang-5 spacecraft discover on the moon? The Chang-5 mission touched down on the moon on December 1, 2020, after a 23-day journey through space. The two-part probe was launched from the Wenching Space Launch Center in China's Hainan province. The same site used for the launches of its predecessors, Chang-3, numerous satellites, and supply missions for the Chinese space station. After successfully detaching from the orbital module, the lander of Chang-5 touched down in a lunar region known as the Sporting Grounds. This area near the lunar equator is a vast, flat expanse on the far side of the moon, notable for its extraordinary latitude and the proximity of Mount Mons Runker, towering 5, 250 feet high. The mission's objective was very clear-cut. The nearly 8-ton probe was tasked with collecting samples from the lunar surface and, for the first time in 40 years, bringing lunar rock back to Earth. This historic mission marked the first time in human history that a mission aimed to extract samples from deep beneath the moon's surface. In recent years, scientists have come to realize that the moon may be vastly different from what we had long believed. It's even possible that the moon holds a substantial reservoir of mineral resources that could address our energy challenges. After successful drilling, the lander sent the samples back to its orbiter via the ascent module, and the journey back to Earth began just 14 Earth days later. This mission was celebrated worldwide as a great achievement of Chinese space exploration, clearly elevating China to the rank of major spacefaring nations on our planet. The return of the samples was eagerly anticipated by international researchers. It can already be said that the hope for gaining new revolutionary knowledge about the moon has more than paid off. Water and Glass On December 17, 2020, the return capsule entered Earth's atmosphere and successfully landed in the sparsely populated expanses of Mongolia. As soon as the samples were secured, specialists got to work. Everyone was eager to confirm whether the drilling would support existing theories about the moon's formation or reveal an entirely different truth about lunar depths. Scientists believe that a planet the size of Mars collided with Earth over 4 billion years ago, resulting in the formation of the moon. During the collision, a portion of Earth broke off and was covered in molten rock. Until now, it was assumed that the temperature was so high that all water evaporated permanently. The moon was considered a desiccated celestial body that was slowly diminishing, or rather, drying up. In subsequent months and years, telescopes and probes discovered large deposits of water ice in craters near the lunar poles. The discourse shifted, and everyone began to wonder where the moon's ice came from and why it hadn't been noticed despite over 50 years of intensive lunar study. In the next 10 years, NASA plans to send astronauts near the poles as part of the Artemis mission. Once there, astronauts are tasked with determining whether the lunar water deposits can be utilized. Water on planned permanent lunar stations could support human life, enable plant growth, and be used for fuel production. However, the discovery made by Chang-5 could potentially overturn all these plans, as this rover found something seemingly impossible on this inconspicuous celestial body. A significant amount of water, and it's everywhere on the moon. In soil samples, researchers from the Chinese Academy of Sciences found an unusually high density of tiny glass particles. These tiny glass crystals likely formed when meteorites struck the moon. Comet impacts could have also brought water to the moon, which has now frozen at the poles. Upon closer examination, the impact glass beads revealed another secret that left researchers speechless because inside these beads, they found water. Each particle contains only a tiny portion of water, but collectively, the lunar water deposits are vast. Can you imagine this? A significant amount of water on the moon. This also sounded unusual to us, but the Chinese research leaves no doubts. Each individual crystal contains 2,000 parts of water per 1 million parts, so as you can see, it's very minimal, and the beads are not even the size of a millimeter. But the majority consists of water, and now, get ready for this because if you extrapolate the concentration across the entire moon, every metric ton of lunar soil will contain 2,000 kilograms of water. In terrestrial conditions and in liquid form, this is practically equivalent to 2,000 liters, which is a substantial amount. The likelihood that these glass particles are evenly distributed across the moon is significant. After all, the moon has been bombarded by comets, asteroids, and meteorites for billions of years. 
This suggests that the moon may be abundant in water from its equator to its poles, eliminating the need for future manned lunar missions to land at the poles and laboriously attempt to utilize the water ice there. Water from these glass beads can be easily extracted through heating, thereby providing lunar settlers with fresh water anywhere on the celestial body. In further research, Chinese scientists even managed to demonstrate that the water trapped inside lunar crystals was once produced by the sun. According to the theory, positively charged hydrogen atoms from the solar wind infiltrated the glass beads and mixed with the oxygen contained within them. The study of various types of hydrogen atoms in the sample showed that these glass beads could also release some of their hydrogen charge at high temperatures when exposed to solar radiation. The total amount of water resources in the form of impact glass beads, according to current estimates, is approximately 298.7 billion metric tons. In 2010, our estimate for water at the North Pole of the Moon was 661 million short tons. Compared to previous assumptions that the Moon was bone dry, this is truly a massive quantity. Even when compared to our Earth, the abundance of water is impressive. Estimates suggest that our blue planet contains roughly 1.47 quintillion short tons of water and rock. Now you might be wondering if there will ever be a moment when this lunar ice melts or the moon becomes a landscape with rivers, lakes, or even entire oceans due to chemical or mechanical changes in these water glass beads. Of course, we have pondered this question as well and explored it. While such ideas would be fantastic, it is unlikely that we will see water flowing across the lunar surface. The moon has virtually no atmosphere, extreme temperatures, and very low atmospheric pressure. Water can only become liquid under certain conditions, which do not exist on the Moon. Since the Moon has a relatively low density and only a very weak magnetic field, significant changes in this regard are not expected in the future. Mars tells a completely different story, where liquid water once flowed. Evidence of erosion has repeatedly confirmed this, and bold terraforming plans aim to use artificially induced greenhouse effects to turn the especially frozen Martian water at the poles into liquid form, resulting in seas and lakes. However, even here, experts have doubts about whether this will ever be realistically achievable. But let's return to the moon and the fascinating discoveries made by Chinese astronauts. In addition to water, other substances were found in the glass beads. These recent exciting discoveries could soon lead to a breakthrough in lunar exploration. Can this solve our energy problems? The samples collected by the Chinese spacecraft are unique. Taken from deep layers, they are approximately a billion years older than all the samples collected from the lunar surface by Apollo astronauts. These glass beads likely formed primarily in the last two billion years due to massive meteorite, asteroid, and comet impacts. To create the necessary temperatures, impacts of roughly asteroid-sized proportions, which wiped out the dinosaurs on Earth about 68 million years ago, are required. Being a relatively small celestial body, the Moon has been subjected to intense cosmic impacts throughout its entire developmental history, and it's astonishing how well it has endured these bombardments. Researchers believe that this is explained in part by its low density and a thick, cushioning layer of dust. The tumultuous life of the Moon could have given rise to a range of features from which we can derive immense benefits in the future. The Chang-5 spacecraft discovered another crystal in lunar rock, and it could be significant because this lunar crystal is made of a substance that was previously entirely unknown. Researchers were both amazed and stunned when they noticed that this structure contains a crucial component for nuclear fusion. For those not familiar with nuclear energy, it's worth noting that the Earth's energy problem will be solved as soon as we have the capability for nuclear fusion. So far, we have relied on nuclear fission to satisfy our massive energy demands. However, the resulting radioactive waste has become a massive problem. In nuclear fusion, lightweight atomic nuclei fuse into heavier ones. In nuclear fusion, a much larger amount of energy is released compared to nuclear fission, and it produces no radioactive waste. Physicists worldwide have been working on this technology for several decades, but so far without success because the pressure, and hence the energy input required to make the nuclei fuse, exceeds the energy output. The problem would be instantly solved if we could find a mineral or atom that naturally possesses an increased readiness for nuclear fusion, and that's exactly what just happened. The newly discovered phosphate mineral has been named Changusite in honor of the Chinese lunar goddess Chang. Future research at the Beijing Institute of Uranium Geology will determine if the helium-3 isotope, ready for nuclear fusion, can be extracted for use on Earth. So, perhaps mining of valuable resources on the moon will soon begin. Spacecraft will daily transport the rock back to Earth, allowing our planet to take a breather. However, this is yet to be seen.
The Chang-6 mission, starting from 2024, is set to collect additional samples from the far side of the moon and return them to Earth. The developments are closely monitored at present, and NASA has also taken notice. Experts estimate that the United States could obtain energy for a year using approximately 27.6 short tons of helium-3. This easily corresponds to the cargo capacity of a space shuttle. The economic value of lunar helium-3 is estimated at $3 billion per short ton. In essence, this discovery could trigger a lunar gold rush and attract many companies to the moon. Some major energy corporations have already expressed interest in partnering with NASA to invest in future space missions. This could mean that the NASA Artemis program will receive a significant boost in development. Now we bid you farewell, and we would like to know your thoughts on the moon as a resource for Earth. Do you believe that solving our energy problems on the moon is just a matter of time, fate, or do you believe that renewable energy sources or free energy, as envisioned by Tesla, would be better alternatives?